Hello and welcome aboard a Class 59 locomotive hauling in excess of 2,000 tonnes of aggregates. Our train has come from the Mendic quarries and is bound for Purley. Part 1 of this video covered the journey from Acton Yard to here at Herne Hill and you can find a link to that in the description. This video follows our train to the end of its journey from here at Herne Hill in South East London through to Purley on the London Surrey border. Departing Herne Hill, our train climbs the steep gradient to Tulse Hill. From here, we follow the down Portsmouth line as far as Streatham. Making use of the Streatham Spur, our train joins the down slow lines of the Brighton Main Line. We continue to follow the Brighton Main Line all the way through to Purley, navigating the busy junctions at Selhurst and East Croydon. Upon arriving at Purley, our train is routed onto the Caterham branch, where once clear of the point work, it will set back into the sidings. Turning to the right, we leave the Chatham Main Line and join the Down Holborn Line towards Tulse Hill. The lines straight ahead continue to Bromley South and the Kent Coast. The steep gradient between Herne Hill and Tulse Hill has seen many a freight train come to grief over the years. Even our powerful Class 59 needs full power to climb the hill.
position 4 route indicator on the signal shows our driver that we are to remain on the down Holborn line. The lines coming into view on our left are the Portsmouth lines and have come from Peckham Rye and London Bridge. Passing through Tulse Hill, we can see the Norwood Spur diverging to our left. Forming part of a triangular junction, the spur joins up with the lines from Ballam and Streatham Hill and heads towards Gypsy Hill and Crystal Palace. Coming into view on our right, we can see the other side of the triangular junction, the Liam Spur, which would take us on the aforementioned lines towards Streatham Hill and Ballam. We are now on the Down Portsmouth line. Charlie 773 signal indicates that signalling has been changed from Victoria Central to Free Bridges Rail Operations Centre. Thameslink Class 700 is working a service on what is known to railway staff as the Wall of Death, or to give it its official name, the Sutton Loop. A single yellow on this signal means our red is on the end of the platform at Streatham. Owing to the 15 miles per hour speed limit on the Streatham Spur, for safety reasons trains that are to be routed onto the spur are always signalled towards a red signal at Streatham. This forces the driver to slow the train down and prevents the tight curve from being taken at too high a speed.
The signal steps up to a green as we approach, meaning we are clear all the way onto the Brighton main line. Our train turns onto the Streatham Spur. The down Portsmouth line continues straight ahead towards Mitcham, Sutton, Epsom and Horsham. join the Brighton Main Line here at Streatham Common. The lines we are joining have come from Balham, Clapham Junction and London Victoria. The line speed changes to 40 over 60. Being a class 7, our train is permitted a maximum speed of 45 miles per hour and required to obey the lower speeds on differential speed boards. The higher speeds apply to parcel and passenger trains as well as light engine movements.
As we approach Norbury, the changing gradient is very evident. The 377 is working an ore to London Victoria service. The Brighton Main Line is a very busy commuter route and in its peak can see 18 trains per hour on the fast lines and 16 trains per hour on the slow lines. In 2014, the junctions at Windmill Bridge that we will pass through in a few moments saw almost as many train movements per day as London Paddington, Euston and Kings Cross combined. The line speed changes here at Thornton Heath to 40 miles per hour for all trains. Our train is now on a climb uphill towards Selhurst. The signal we are approaching allows trains to cross onto the upline to be turned back at the aforementioned station. The arrival and departure roads for the busy Selhurst depot diverge to our left. These lines also allow empty coaching stock to proceed northbound via the depot onto the London Bridge lines at Norwood. The lines diverging to our right head down towards Gloucester Road Junction and West Croydon. The skyline changes as Croydon comes into view ahead. 
The busy junctions here at Cottage and Windmill Bridge join the London Bridge lines and the Victoria lines together. Grade separation is used to good effect. The lines from Norwood to West Croydon used largely by London Overground pass through the middle of the complex. Although a very busy railway scene, it isn't a varied one, with the main traction these days being Electrostars of many colours and Thameslink Class 700s, with the occasional freight train such as ours to break things up. Turning to the left, our train continues on the down slow line. The line straight ahead is now the slow reversible. With its six platforms, East Croydon is a busy station for both passenger footfall and train movements. Plans to redevelop the station area as well as the junctions at Windmill Bridge have unfortunately been cancelled. The station is a major bottleneck on the network and running through on green signals like our train today is a rare treat. The reversible line and platform here at South Croydon are used as a turnback facility. In the past, the station facilitated the turnback of an hourly service to Milton Keynes via Kensington Olympia. The line towards Oxted, East Grinstead and the non-electrified Uckfield branch diverged to our left.
In a similar situation to the one seen at Streatham, our train receives restrictive signal aspects as we approach the 20 miles per hour crossover into the platform loop at Purley. Position 2 route indicator on the signal grants our train access into the up platform loop at Purley. Once the rear of the train clears the point work and associated signal, the train will propel into the siding on our left under the guidance of a shunter. The hopper house, where our wagons will be unloaded, can be seen to the left.
thank you for watching this driver's eye view video. If you have enjoyed it and want to show your appreciation, please click that like button and consider subscribing. You can also support the channel by becoming a member from 99p per month. A massive thank you goes out to my video contributor, without whom these videos wouldn't be possible. For more driver's eye views, train driver vlogs and train sim content, you can follow me on my social media channels or join us over on Discord. Once again, thank you for watching and hope to see you again very soon.